Hi ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about how to find the surface area of nets, which really is finding the area of this composite figure. Right? So this net actually folds up into a cube. Um, so we're going to find the area of each of the faces, and each of the faces is really one of these squares, and then we're going to add them all up together. Each square is the same since the side lengths are the same all the way around. Right, so this square is a three by three, which means the area inside is nine. So all of these other squares also have an area of nine inside. So to find the area of the full figure, we're gonna multiply six groups of nine together. That gives us an area of 54 meters squared. Our second one here, again we have a net that folds up into a cube and the side lengths here are four and two tenths. Right, so we're gonna multiply four and two tenths times four and two tenths and that gives us an area of 17 and 64 hundredths for each square. So I could fill that in for each of the squares or I know I can multiply six faces times the 17 and 64 hundredths to give us our full area. And that would be 105 and 84 hundredths. So our area, 105 and 84 hundredths meters squared again. Let's take a look at an example of a rectangular prism here. All right, if this folds up, it would be a rectangular prism that maybe looks like a cereal box or something like that. Right? And if I think about a cereal box, if I'm unfolding it or folding it, this panel here would be the exact same as this panel. I know this side panel, the skinny rectangle, is the exact same as that skinny panel there. And then we have maybe the top of the box and the bottom of the box. Okay, so if I can find the area of one of them, then I can find the area of the matching piece. So I'm going to take a look at this rectangle that's on the left. I notice that the length is 25, or we'll call it the width is 25, the length is 10. Either way, the area is 250, 25 times 10. That means the matching panel over here is also 250. All right, I notice that on the bottom here, this is 10, and opposite sides of a rectangle are equal, so that means that piece is 10 as well. Um, so the length is 10 and the width is 8, so the area of this piece is 80, and that means the bottom piece is also 80. All right, and the last step here is to calculate the area of the skinnier long rectangles there. We know the length is eight, and the width here has to be 25 because opposite sides are equal. So eight times 25 would give an area of 200. All right, so we have the area of each of the pieces. The next part would be to add them all up together. All right, we have two groups of 80, two groups of 200, and two groups of 250. All right, so that's 160, 400, and 500. And when we add all of that up together, that gives us a full area of 1,060 centimeters squared. Let's go on to number four here. All right, this isn't labeled um, as clearly as the other one, but we're going to fill our pieces in here, right? So I see that this part is three. I'm going to put a three all the way across here. I also notice the top is five. So I'm going to bring five down again because opposite sides of a rectangle are equal and there are four rectangles as I go down. And then the last part here, I have a four. If I fold this up to make a rectangular prism, these two pieces, let me highlight them in yellow, they would meet up and match up. So that means they both have to be four centimeters, right? The same is true for these pieces. They both have to be four. So all these kind of L shapes are all four centimeters because they match up and because opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. All right, so now that we have the dimensions, um, let's go ahead and find the area of each square or rectangle here. So I'm going to look at the top piece first. 
Um, the dimensions there are five by four, so that means the area is 20. Just below it, I see the length is five and the width is three. So that means that area is 15. I'm gonna keep working down the one below it, dimensions of five and four. So again, the area is 20. And right below that, we have a five, and this rectangle has to match with this one in the middle. So it must also have an area of 15. And then we gotta look at the areas on the left and the right side. The dimensions are four and three, so it has to have an area of 12. And again, same thing for the left side. So we have two rectangles that have an area of 20, two rectangles that have an area of 15, and two rectangles that have an area of 12. So that's 40, 30, and 24. And then we're gonna add all of that up. Gives us an area of 94 centimeters squared. All right, so try it for yourself on your own on the worksheets and I will catch up with you guys on our call. Have a good day. Bye-bye.